Welcome to the People Priority Podcast, where we dig into topics that help you show up as your best self for you and your circle of influence. I'm your host, Julie Schneers, a teacher turned speaker, team culture consultant, and leadership growth coach who loves people. Join me every week for conversations that will motivate, educate, and hopefully just inspire you to grow through the power of communication, connection, and confidence. Because you and your people, you're worth it. Today, I want to talk about personal growth goals. Personal growth in general. I love this topic because it's what I'm constantly pushing. Because if you're going to get better at communication, you're going to get better at building relationships and team culture in your space or, or being your best self or being better for those in your circle of influence. That means that you have goals, growth goals. Having growth goals means that you're not happy where you are. And I don't mean like that. I'm not happy. I'm sad. I feel like I'm not good enough. It's more like I'm not going to accept that this place is the best that I can do that I am going to keep striving to be my best and I'm happy in a space continuing to better myself, not just for me, but for the people in my space. And having personal growth goals is impactful for all leaders because staying stagnant is gross. Why would you ever accept that where you are is where you need to stay forever? Because, you know, everything around us changes. Technology is constantly changing. Your job description is probably constantly changing. Social media is constantly changing. Strategy in business is constantly changing. What our kids need because of what they're exposed to is constantly changing. If you're not growing, you're dying. We've all heard it. It's just real. So the real question with that is, what are your growth goals right now? What are you working on in this moment that is going to grow you to be your best self? Now, we're talking about always having growth goals. And I, I do recognize that that can feel heavy. Do I never get to rest? Do I never get to breathe and where I'm at? That's a beautiful question that you have to work on through your mindset. Because mindset holds the key to how well you're going to grow and your ability to reach your goals. If your mindset is, I'm never gonna be able to reach it, or oh my gosh, I'm always having to change and adapt, and my job is always changing, and social media is always changing, and what my kids need is always changing, and and you feel that heaviness with it, then you're gonna be frustrated for the rest of your life because the world around you is not gonna stop moving. Fact. Your kids aren't gonna stop changing. Your business isn't gonna stop changing. The people in your company are going to continue to adapt and change and have different needs, to have different strengths, to have different growth opportunities. If you are wanting to stay in one space, you've missed the boat. Personal growth is not a bad thing. It is not something that you should shy away from. Personal growth is something we should all get excited about because that's what keeps us moving forward. I love the idea of setting growth goals. And there are so many opinions about goals, the word goals, that sometimes it could set us up for failure, that goals make it feel like we are not currently doing great things. And I I understand that perspective, which is also why I think you have to go hand in hand with celebrating progress and celebrating achievements and saying it and creating the mindset of, We've achieved this. Okay, guys, what do you want to do next? Where do you want to go next? Which area and space and direction do we want to grow in next? That applies to every space in your life. Because business, kids, families, you constantly changing. So when we're looking at the idea of growth goals, why growth goals? Because growth is crucial. You don't want to get stuck because then you will get left behind. Let go of the mindset 
that, oh my gosh, I have to keep on moving forward and creating new goals and I have to keep learning. And it's just overwhelming because you're always going to be overwhelmed if you don't shuck that mindset. So you've got to let your mindset adjust and you have to be able to tell yourself what is going well. You have to let your affirmations speak louder than your fears of never being enough. And you've got to let go of that being linked to your growth goals. So when I'm talking about personal development and I'm talking about setting growth goals, just lay it all out. You need them. You need personal growth goals. You need personal growth development. No matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter how old you are, how high up you are in the company or whatever you're doing next in life, if you're not setting some sort of growth goal, if you're not working on professional development, you are going to struggle in ways that you might not have to struggle because getting stuck creates its own bag of problems. So growth goals are impactful and that's why. What are your growth goals? As you're sitting here and you're listening, and you're thinking about your life, which might have family in it. It might be you trying to grow for your own self or maybe grow for your kids or grow for your spouse. It might be that you're trying to take care of aging parents or who knows where you are in your life, but your life probably has some personal growth goals. Your work should have some personal growth goals too. What are you doing for yourself, for your circle of influence and or your team? What are your personal growth goals in yourself and others' space? Now, when you think about those growth goals, and I know that I've said it before, if you've listened to every episode, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it again. How have you created a map to reach your goals? Because setting a map, a plan, an end result, I want to accomplish this exactly, and this is how I think I can get there, is where you have to start. If you don't set your intentions, you're going to have a hard time walking a path to that intention. Now, I know that there's a lot of opportunity for your path to move, or maybe even the goal to need to shift, and I think that's okay but you need a plan. So if you're just sitting here going, well, I just want to be better. Well, better, define better. You need an exact, I'm going to grow myself by, I want to read two books a month or a year. I don't know, whatever your growth goal might be. I'm going to call someone close to me every other day and check in on them. Or I, I don't know what I want to be a better communicator could look like if that's your goal or I want to be, okay, back then if that sounds weird. If your goal is that you want to be better at touching base with other people, maybe your growth goal is that you're going to call someone close to you, check in on them every other day. And your goal is to do that. And then you realize that making phone calls isn't going to be enough. So you need to broaden your horizons to coffee once a week with somebody else or I'm taking a little drive to see somebody special or writing a letter. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but you, you have to be intentional about setting those goals so that you can actually have a place to pursue them, at least a direction to drive in. It's okay if you decide to take a different route than originally planned, but you at least have to plan a route. You have to think through, if I'm going to get to point B from where I am in point A, then which direction do I want to start driving in? Which makes me wonder... What are your growth goals and what have you done to reach them? And if you aren't sure as you listen what you would name out loud because you haven't really set a growth goal for home or for work or just for personal you, what's holding you back? I think what holds you back is a really important question to ask because that can really help us understand maybe what our growth goals should be. Oftentimes, when I am having this conversation with clients, I hear a lot of I don't knows. And maybe I don't know is what's holding you back. The fear of the unknown. The worry that you might not know what to do or where to do it and how to go about it. 
Or maybe what holds you back is just the fear of the unknown. It's important that you lock in on goals that you have that are going to grow you in the directions that you want to go. So if you let your mind think through big picture dream world and you don't let your mind ask what if yet and you don't let your mind go to worst case scenarios yet, what goals would you set for yourself? What goals do you have for those in your circle of influence that you can be impactful in creating? And then you can deal with what's holding you back. But you have to think big and you have to create these goal growth. You have to create these growth goals that stretch you so that you have the opportunity so you can even consider what might hold you back. Because what holds you back might actually be the space you want to grow in. So here's the truth about growth. So I've, I've spent a lot of time trying to convince you that having growth goals is important and professional development is important and not letting your own brain and your own heart hold you back from pursuing something that you want to get better at or figuring out a way to attack something that you want to be as a company or a team better at because of the what ifs or because of the, the struggles that you might encounter. Okay, so I'm going to just drop a little truth bomb on you. Growth is going to equal pain. So hopefully I've convinced you to think about it. And now I'm going to go ahead and you're going to say, oh, why would I even do that now? I know, I get it. It's gross. But I feel like we have to just be honest here. Here's why. Growth means there's going to be a change somewhere. So if I want to be more physically fit, that's a growth goal that I have to be healthier in general, then I'm going to have to maybe change some things. Maybe I have to change the way I eat. Maybe I have to change how many times I go to the gym. Maybe I have to change my sleep schedule. There's going to be change. If I'm going to make growth, there's going to have to be changes. Otherwise, I'm sitting exactly where I'm sitting, which means that you're, there's no point in putting growth in the space. If, you, if you're not aware there's going to be change uh, when you're setting a growth goal, then duh. Change most often means that somewhere, for someone, there's going to be loss. Maybe it's a loss of the extra TV time because you're going to bed early. Maybe it's the loss of an extra drink at night when you're out at an event because you're trying to cut back. Maybe it's choosing a healthier option. Maybe it's having to schedule time in your day to go to the gym, which might mean there's a loss of other things that would have filled your day. You have to make choices. And a change to get to that growth is going to be a loss of something. Now, I just gave you this personal example, but when you're talking about a team, if you're setting a goal for a team, it's the same idea. That growth is going to mean change for your team. And that change is going to mean loss for the way that you used to do things or for what someone on the team has always done and that someone feels like they lost what they were good at. I don't know. But there's going to be loss somewhere to someone. If there's change, someone feels the pain of loss somewhere. Which means pain. So with growth, there's always going to be pain. So let's just, now that the cat's out of the bag, set yourself up for, this is my growth goal. This is how I want to grow. This is why I want to grow in this direction. I know it might be painful, but why is it worth it? If that growth means pain, why is it worth it? Because more often times than not, we quit in the middle. We quit when it gets hard. We quit when it gets messy. If you have a goal, you have to know your why. So that when it gets messy and uncomfortable and painful, you can hold on to your why. Why is it important to you? If you don't have your why, 
to hold on to in that gross, messy, uncomfortable middle, you're going to struggle to meet your goals. You're going to struggle to make growth. So the hope that telling you the messy is going to exist, the gross and the uncomfortable are going to come with every growth goal you have. So what are some ways that you can plan to grow still when you hit the hard parts? Have your why posted somewhere that you can read it and look at it and hold on to it. Have an accountability partner who can lift you up and encourage you and tell you what you know you're going to need to hear before you get stuck in that space so that you're continuing to formulate a positive mindset around that growth goal rather than letting the hard start to tell our brains the things that stop us from growing. Because not giving up is the only way you actually meet a growth goal. Now, if we're flipping that to team, you're going to need to think through what is my team going to need in order to get through the pain and the growth and the messy because it's going to exist. If we're going to make this change, what pain points could we see? What loss can we anticipate? And how can we combat that? And you could take those tips that I just gave you. Where's the why? Does everyone on the team know the why? Does everyone on the team see the value in that growth goal and can get behind the why? Who's going to lift up your people? Who's going to come in and help get through the hard parts if you hit a pain that you're struggling to overcome by yourselves? What strategies do you have in the back of your plan B, in the back of your brain, to help navigate the hard parts? And how are you going to affirm your team as they're navigating these changes? What does celebrations look like along that growth goal progress chart? What will you do when you're going from A to B in order to keep your team on track? Knowing that you might have to change directions, knowing that a road might be closed as you're on the drive, knowing that there might be some weird construction change or somewhere. Okay, my analogy is getting weird, but I want you to just know that it's okay to change course as long as you're still figuring out as a team how to get there from A to B and that you've thought through the pain points that can come from growth. Because acknowledging that that's real is the only way to not let it shut you down from the power that comes from growing. You have to harness the power that comes from being the person who can intentionally search for growth. If you are the person that is a growth goal getter, then you have the power to overcome the pain from the change and the loss that comes with growth. And if you're sitting here thinking, well, I don't have a growth goal, you made me think about a growth goal, and then you told me why I should be nervous about a growth goal, I'm just not so sure that here we see this. You're worth it. It is worth it that you grow. It is worth it for your people that as a team, you continue to grow. If you don't know where to grow, sit down and spend some time with you or sit down and spend some time with your team. But setting those growth goals that everyone can get behind can really make a team feel like a team. As long as you communicate well, create connections that make people feel seen and heard along the possible pain points. And you move forward with confidence because those unknown spaces can be hard to navigate, but growing through them is what will create a stronger you and a stronger team. So the high points for today are top three takeaways. Come find some growth goals. Find your why in your growth goals so that you can work through what might hold you back. And create strategies to help you not give up in the middle, the messy, the uncomfortable, because growing, personal development, 
creating goals that are going to make you be your best self is worth it. Your challenge today is to find a place that you want to grow. In what area of your life do you want to level up? It might be for family time. It might be at home. It might be with your kids. It might be with your spouse. It might be with your parents. It might be with your friends. It might be in making friends. But it also might be at work with your team, with the person that works next to you, with the person that you're struggling with, with a project that you're struggling with, with an area that you know could just be better. It really, there's so many opportunities when you look at your personal life, your family, your work, your friendships, relationships of all kinds. I'm asking you to find one area that you know you want to grow in. Set an intentional growth goal and create an action plan to get there. That means that you've set a standard of what achievement looks like so that you don't move the bar on yourself and that you have created progress checkpoints that you will promise yourself or your team to celebrate when you get there. Because if you just wait till the very end, that gets a little overwhelming. And of course, the celebrations along the way help the middle feel less bad. And that means you've also created a strategy to help lift you and or your team up if the hard parts get real hard. Your quote for today, going through this challenge that I've given you, is from the author of the book, You Are Enough, Mandy Hale. Here it is. Growth is painful. Change is painful. But nothing is as painful is staying stuck somewhere you don't belong. In what space do you maybe not belong that you can get unstuck from just by pushing yourself to grow a little? Thanks for listening and being my people. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, hook me up with a five-star review wherever you're listening right now. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the People Priority Podcast. They don't miss out on more tips, tricks, and important reminders. All right, I'll see you next week.